It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And really, our mission is to inspire. Our mission really is to empower, and our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of those resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, in the building, we have the one and only Stacy Crawley. What's up, Stacy? How are you? I'm good, Shay. How are you? Good to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. So welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, the folks are, are reading the, the the bio below. They're seeing how famous you are. They're, they're, they're reading the topic you have. And, and I'm curious, you start off with how to love yourself. Now, in, in a time where there's mental illness that are rampant, in a time where there's a war going on, in a time there's uncertainty in the world and a lot of chaos in homes, um, talk about what does love yourself mean, number one. And number two, why is it more important today than ever before in history? Wow. So let me just start by saying what it means to love yourself is to really tap into who you are, to figure out and to discover who God created you to be, who you are. Also to kind of take a look back at the things that that have kept you from being exactly where you're supposed to be, right? So there's so many different nuances to self-love. There's self-awareness, there's self-reflection, there are um, taking a step back because I know a lot of us, we have things in our past that we don't realize that are there that are keeping us stuck and keeping us from, you know, uh, I guess showing up in the world, which is the way we're supposed to. So self, self-love self is taking care of yourself, loving yourself, understanding who you are, walking as your authentic self unapologetically and doing the things to really foster um, who God created you to be. So, yeah. Now you mentioned self-awareness and mm-hmm. self-reflection. We don't know what those even mean either. I'm, I'm sorry. That I don't want to. I, I just want to make sure that folks who seventy uh, percent of the audience they they they're dualpreneur. So they might have worked a full time job. Um, they've been working in a business full time. Uh, they might have been involved in the community. So they're sitting down. And you said, hey, it includes self awareness and includes self reflection. Shay, can she stop down and talk about what's the difference between self love and self awareness, and and how are they relevant? And then can she give us an example of self reflection? Yeah. So a lot of times we're constantly, especially with with the way that the world is, we're constantly going and going and going. So a lot of times we're conditioned by certain things in our environment, the way that we've been conditioned to learn certain things about ourselves growing up from our parents, our families and so forth. And so a lot of times we are going through life on autopilot, so to speak, and we don't take the time to really understand who we are, what we bring to this world, how powerful we are and how unique we are and how we need to show up because someone's waiting for us. So self-reflection and self-awareness is to take that time to just slow all the way down, to take time to write in your journal, to understand who am I? What do I want? What do I like? What triggers me? What frustrates me? What makes me happy? What makes me tick? And so at the end of the day, when you do all those things and you become self-aware of who you are and you discover who you are, then you're able to walk in that you're able to really be intentional about taking care of yourself, which is the self-care piece, and then also loving on yourself. And so that's all of that comes together. When you don't take the time to do those things, you're really not showing up in the way in which you're really truly supposed to. Does that make sense? <laughs> it, it makes it makes a lot of sense, which leads us to part two here, which is you, you, you talked about ignite your confidence. And I've got to ask, why do people struggle today? We've got a lot of... I don't know, videos on YouTube. We've got reels, but it has great music to it, by the way, that you can watch and and boost you up and so forth. Um, And so much access to information. Why do folks still struggle with confidence? Wow. It's a couple of different things. I think that a lot of us are holding on to our past. A lot of us don't realize how our past, whether it's our recent past or even past from our from our childhood, that we have different things that we've experienced that we have repressed, things that we haven't um, taken the time to really dig into and understand how we move and how we think and how all of those things really 
um, affect how we, our actions and the, the belief system that we have about ourselves. So a lot of times when we are going through life and I'll just say from a personal perspective, growing up, I was bullied. I went through a lot of different things from uh, family and, and friends, so to speak, where they would say certain things about me and it stuck with me. And so of course, as an adult, um, before I was having issues with confidence and not really feeling like I could do the things that I really want to do because I was doubting myself. I didn't think I was comparing myself to the next person thinking that their life was better. And it's just like, no, I had to take that, that time and take a step back and really figure out, okay, who was Stacy? And I want, you know, everyone to do the same thing and that's what's important. So, yeah. Well, you know, let's, so let's, let's take it another layer if we can, because you and I, we had a chance to meet recently at a, at a gala, right? Yes. And I want you to share maybe one or two things, or maybe three things that someone could do to boost their confidence. I first want to talk to the person that has to go into a room. And we were at a, at a gala. It was a big event. And so you got to get all dressed up and, you know, everybody gets, you know, um, you know um, how can I say? Even I'm concerned about what people are going to think what I have on. I know that might not be right, even at 55, right? right. And, and you're looking to see if this fit and does this you know, does this show too much of my stomach muscles? And it's just, it's just a lot that's going on, right? So I first want to talk to the person that has to be out, that they got to be seen, and they're comparing themselves to others with some things they can do for self-confidence. And then we'll come back to the other person that's just, just home. Yeah. I mean, they're just there about themselves, but they still struggle with confidence. But let's talk about the person that has to be out, has to be seen, and they're comparing themselves to other folks. So Shay, what's the question? What's one or two, three things that someone could do to, to help themselves settle themselves when they keep comparing themselves to other people that they're visually seeing? All right. So let's just kind of take, I'm going to just go a little deep for once um, yeah. at this moment. And I'm going to say, you have to know who you are biblically and what God says about you. So we struggle, right? We struggle with the way that we see ourselves. But when we take a, a step back and see ourselves the way that God sees us, then we can say, okay, my lane is my lane. And what God has for me is for me. Yes, there will be times where you can get up in front of people. And and I'm not even going to lie. But I've, I've been there personally where I've had situations where I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't wear the right outfit for this. or I didn't feel the most confident in this. However, the what what I did was I had sat down and I had to talk my, talk to myself and say, okay, what it what it was about that situation that made you feel like you had to compare yourself to someone else? Why are you you know taking time to really water yourself down to compare yourself to the next person because there's only one you? And so sitting down, number one, sitting down and talking to myself and really pouring into myself to say, listen, you are who you are and you are forced to be reckoned with. So if you take that time to just sit down and, and pour into yourself, speak life into yourself. And number two is when you go into a space, you have to understand that you deserve to be in that space no matter what. And there are people that are that want to be where you are but they don't have the, the the confidence. They don't have what it takes to get there. So when you're even showing up in that space, you've done a boatload of the work just to get there. So you should just really feel good about yourself in that moment to say, listen, I did this thing. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm going in a direction in which I want to go. And so you have to, and I guess it all comes together, just speaking life into yourself and really believing what you're saying. And then also looking at um, how God sees you and really, Help, helping that to align with the way that you see yourself. Well said. And are there affirmations or um, mental sayings that you could share with the audience to, to the other person? They're like, yes. well, actually, Shay, I work from home and I'm still yeah. got to get my confidence up to get on. Not in a negative way. Uh, they yeah. may have what I would call imposter syndrome. I know that's not any yeah. of you watching, but I want to talk to that person that is watching. Where they're like, I think I got it all together, Shay, but before I cut this camera on and went on Zoom, um, before I joined this meeting on a conference call, uh, even in my house, I've got to get my confidence or mojo together just yeah. to get through a lot of things I got to get through. So, Shay, what's your question? My question to Stacey is, um, can you share one, two or three affirmations or maybe more that you're able to say so we can build that inner confidence inside of us that allows us to have the courage to step not only outside our comfort zone, but to go big? Yes. So number one is I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Number two is I am powerful beyond measure. Number three, money flows to me easily and effortlessly. Number four, all the things that I want, want me and the desires of my heart will be fulfilled. And those are the things that I start with during the day. 
They're listening saying, Shay, she sounds passionate. Like, she <laughs> likes that when she starts talking about this. I can see the gleam in her eyes. Shay, her voice picks up. Her voice rate starts going faster. She has a big old smile. <laughs> but Shay, <laughs> I didn't get a chance to read the bio. But who is Stacy? Slow down. Take a moment. Let her tell a little about her backstory. Where does this come from? What does she know about this personally that has led her to have all this passion that she's unleashing right now? So here's the question. Who is Stacy? Tell a little about who you are and your backstory that and what was the defining moment that led you on this path to do what you're doing now? Wow. So I am Stacy Crowley. I am a mom of four beautiful girls. Um, I have a 10 year old, a seven year old and my twins are four. So you can imagine my house is pretty chaotic <laughs> and I call it beautiful chaos because I absolutely love being a mom. I still work full time. And then my when I take the cape off during the day, I am um, a speaker, an author and I love every bit of it because it's exactly what I want to be. But I wasn't always in this space. I wasn't always confident. Um, like I said, growing up, I've had multiple instances where people, family, cousins, and, and quote unquote friends at the time would talk about the way I spoke, the way I looked, um, just my overall personality. So I never felt accepted. I never felt good enough. I never felt like um, anyone would really I guess, desire to be around me. So I really uh, questioned myself a lot, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of anxiety, went through postpartum depression with uh, three out of four of my pregnancies, mm -hmm. recently went through a divorce um, and becoming a mom of four, having to you know navigate through single motherhood of, of four. And then basically having to go through a period where the reality doesn't match the vision that you have for your life. So of course that could be crushing for you, right? And so what I had to do in a defining moment for me, I was sitting down in my living room and I was crying out to God. And I said, well, this is not what I wanted for my life, God. Like, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted for my family. This is not how I wanted to show up in the world. And I don't feel good. I don't look good. I don't feel good enough. I, you know, this person's doing this, she's doing that. And I'm, I'm just staying stagnant, right? And so I remember God saying to me in that moment, when I got quiet enough to hear him after crying for probably about an hour straight, he said, my, my daughter, why can't you see yourself the way that I see you? And when I tell you in that moment, I cried some more, but it was tears of happiness because I knew that he was there with me. I knew that there was so much more that I was destined for, and it was going to take some time to get there, but I had to start somewhere. And it was that defining moment for me where I said, okay, there's more for my life. There's more. I got to share this story. I have to do the work first so that I can heal, so that I can bring other people along to understand that there's purpose, there's destiny, there's all the things on your life. You may go through a lot of mess, but you're going to have a message coming on the other side of it. And you're going to use that message to bless other people. So, yeah. What's your secret to, to juggling all this? Um, I'm listening and um, I had two boys that I had to raise and uh, you got double that, by the way. And yeah. bless that. I'll say bless that. And um, you're able not only to, to raise them, you're also um, running a business. Um, and there's nothing wrong being a nine to five millionaire. Come on, somebody. Nothing wrong with that at all. And so you've got a lot going on yet you're doing a doggone thing. So I guess the, the question is, um, what's your secret to time management or your secret to prioritizing so you don't burn yourself out? Yeah, it's a couple of different things. So, and I've learned this over a course of a period of time where when I'm in the moment with my kids, I am present with my kids. When I'm in the moment and I'm doing business related items, you know, business related things, um, I'm in business mode. So I have to prioritize. So normally when my kids are gone, that's when I do a lot of the stuff. I try to batch content. Um, I try to do all my brainstorming when they go to sleep, answer emails in the, you know, early in the morning before they wake up or do it at night when they go to bed. And then, like I said, on the weekends where they're gone, that's when I try to do my speaking engagements and all the other things that um, I want to do. In terms of, and of course I work during the day, so I do that <laughs> and I work from home. So I just try to, and I don't believe in balance. I believe in harmony. So I believe in mm -hmm. it all just working and flowing um, as, as it, how it flows with your life because every life, everyone's life is different. And so that's what works for me. And I think also the biggest thing is giving myself grace and understanding that I'm not going to go at the pace in which I see everyone, but I'm not going to stop either. So I'm going to keep going until I can get to a point where I can really go full speed ahead. But in the meantime, 
I can take a few, <laughs> you know, I can build, put brick by brick and lay that foundation. And when it's the right time, I can keep it moving. So, yeah, I mean, I love what you're saying. Uh, sounds like you have a lot of gratitude in there. One of the things that's worked for me, I don't know if you do journaling or not journaling. Yes. Were you able to write in, in a journal? Um, and I'm, I, that's something that's worked for me. If, if it is, it sounds like you've used journaling as well. Talk about um, how, how journaling, which is being able to write, whether you write on a piece of paper. I like that. Do you write on a piece of paper or do you use an app? I use an app these days. No, I use paper. It's for me, pen and paper all day long. <laughs> I'm old school that with that. It's whatever <laughs> works for folks. So my question to you is talk about journaling, um, mm -hmm. why you use paper and and, and, and and maybe your system for doing it. Because for me, um, I say for the last almost 10 years, it was something I thought used to be hokey pokey. I'll say that. Um, and I know, I know I shouldn't say that, but it's, I'm trying to be the most positive guy in the world. But what I found is that when I found a system and I try many of them that work for me, it's the most satisfying thing I do every morning. Mm -hmm. And when I get a chance to do it twice a day, it's a game breaker. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, tell us about your system of journaling. Uh, what do you do? What do you use? And how has it impacted uh, your life? Yeah, so I've actually been journaling. I'll take it back. I've been journaling for quite some time. And I remember when I was back in middle school and my teacher introduced me to poetry. And so poetry, journaling, it was just so therapeutic for me to just get out all of my thoughts. And so I think that's why I'm, I'm pen and paper type of girl. Um, so when my girls are sleeping, I take the time or even when they're, they're um, even when they're up, because sometimes I'll tell them, hey, mommy has self-care time. I'll be back in here, you know, I'll let them go in the living room and have a good time and have a little bit of screen time. Um, and then I'll go in my room and I'll just sit there. And sometimes I'll use journal prompts from like the internet, or I'll just start with three things that I'm grateful for. Um, the next thing I'll just talk about just what I'm feeling in that moment. And I don't judge how I'm feeling. I just write because when I think about when I'm writing and I'm thinking about it too much, then, you know, it's just, it's going to stop me. So I just write everything that I'm feeling in that moment just to get it all out of my head, all out of my body, and just to allow it to just release from me. And that, and that helps me a whole lot. Excuse me. Another thing that helps me is just sitting silent. <laughs> like I said, when my kids go to sleep, whew, just sitting in one space. And sometimes, honestly, it sounds crazy, but looking at the wall, just it just does it for me <laughs> just for at least two to three minutes. And then, of course, sometimes I love to meditate as well. Um, can't do it often as much as I want to, but that helps oh, as well, especially with breathing exercises. So those are things that really, really help me. I love it. I love it. I've, I'm, uh, I've used the uh, five minute journal uh, yeah. that made a difference for me. It's an electronic journal, by the way. So you okay. got to take five minutes in the morning and say what you're grateful for and what you're going to do. And then five yeah. minutes at night to say uh, what went well that day that you're really thankful for. So they all work. Yeah. My recommendation. And it sounds like that, uh, that she's saying the exact same thing is just do it. Just yeah. find the one that works for you. And uh, it, it will be a game changer. It will be a big game changer for you in the area of confidence. And I believe self-love for me is I, I start writing things. I never thought I'd write down that I'm grateful for. And the gratitude part is probably my favorite part of doing every day, by the way. Anyway, yeah. um, so when you're not saving the world, because it's not about me, this is all about you. When you're not out saving the world, what do you do for fun? Oh, I love to hang out with my girls. We do game nights. So we love Connect Four. Sorry. We just got perfection. Uh, we love that. And we just love, I love taking walks with my girls, uh, just doing different things. We love skating. And then that's just with my girls. When I'm by myself, I love to take myself out. I don't mind going to a spa day with girlfriends or by myself. I love going to the movies. I just love being out. And then there are moments where I just like to sit on the sofa with a bag of popcorn and watch about three movies on Netflix without anyone around. So those are my times. Those are the things that I absolutely love to do. And I love to just try new, just new and exciting things. Ah, I love it. I love it. That's so much fun. You know, we, we have, a, um, well, there's one question I like to ask. It's one of my yeah. favorite questions that I wait for. And, and that question really is around uh, mentors because I believe that success is a team sport. You can only get so far by yourself. And the question I like the way I frame it all the time is you've had many mentors along this journey of life. So many. I know it's always unfair, but if you had to select one mentor, one idea that's had an impact on your life that you want to share with us that anyone in the audience can take that idea and use in their own life. 
uh, what would it be? And you, the audience, you, you lean in right now because this is, to me, this is probably one of the top five things that we do because it allows you to benefit from other folks' mentors. And wow, how incredible is that? Yeah, I would have to say Dr. Cheryl Wood. I met mm-hmm. Dr. Cheryl when I, this had to be back in 2016. 2016, I met Dr. Cheryl and she has just been a light <laughs> in, in my life. Um, just been so inspiring to me. Everything that I desire in terms of my career and where I want to go, um, she has just laid the pathway and it's just been so amazing to just to see the journey. And so she's been my mentor in my head, so to speak. And we're really good friends and, and I love her. And I think one of the things that I know for sure that she has said to me before that has really, really stuck with me. And there's many things, but one thing that has stuck with me for sure was you have to slow down. Sometimes you got to slow down to speed up. And I didn't understand in the very moment when she told me what it took some time. And I said, okay, that makes a lot of sense. You know, we want to get things, you know, we want things to be so, um, I guess, instant gratification, but sometimes it's okay to just take a step back because when you take that step back, you're able to move forward um, in a much faster way. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing, by the way. We have a segment here called Today is My January 1st. And I know for some of you, you wait for that every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For those that follow us on YouTube over at, at I am Shay Brown, or if you're on the podcast, you can look up Happy Entrepreneur Show on the podcast. This is one of the segments I know you wait for. So you can go ahead and say those magical words right now. Today is my January 1st. And for those folks that are tuning in for the very first time, and they're just tuning in for the very first time, and you're seeing us for the very first time, today is my January 1st represents a do-over. It's our personal mantra. It's a fresh start. It means our past no longer equals our future. So when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, my question over to the one and only Sonia. When you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? And what do you say to empower, inspire folks who are listening right now? Wow. I hear um, the first word that comes to mind is resurrection. I don't know where that came from, but just something that (laughs) in terms of just resurrecting from any type of pain, any type of anything that's keeping you down, that's keeping you stuck, anything that is holding you down to resurrect from that. It's just to come out and just to flourish um, that's what I hear. And, and that's where I want to inspire everyone to have the, that moment that I guess I, resurrection, but then also that butterfly moment, butterfly that coming out the chrysalis and just really, really coming into your own and really walking in what God has for you. And so that's what I hear, um, and releasing and allowing him to move you forward. So. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I love it. Today is your January 1st. You listen to the one and only Stacy Crawley. She's on the other side. She helped you not not only does she help you step back and learn how to love yourself, but also how to ignite the confidence inside of you. And it's with that confidence that you're able to get clarity. When you're able to get clarity, you're able to get focus. When you're able to get focus, you're able to get what you want in life. And that's something that she focuses on. So I'm going to ask her now, one, is she taking on any new clients? Two, what type of clients is she looking for? And then last, well, how can you best connect with her? How can you stay in a conversation with her over and beyond today? Yeah, so I'm actually taking on clients. I'm taking on -on one-on-one clients at the moment. I'm looking for women who are purpose-driven, women who know that they are destined for more, destined for greatness, have a fire in their belly, but they just don't know how to get there. They're feeling stuck, low self-esteem, low self-confidence, lacking self-love and self-care, and just to have someone to come in to just walk that journey with them so that they can just come out and just flourish again, my word, another word, flourish and just come out and be everything that they're supposed to be. Um, And how can people connect with me? Um, I'm I'm over on IG, Facebook, as well as LinkedIn, <laughs> and it's at Stacy S. Crawley. Stacy S. Crawley is in the building. Number one, thank you so much for being here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate it. We know you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. You're giving us time away from those you love the most and your career to be here. So thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you. And with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And I want to always remind you as you're listening, you are amazing and that you are awesome and that today is your January 1st. And because of that reason, your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. With that being said, for those that may have forgotten, by the way, my name 
It's Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember this. Remember, remember, time is long. Life, on the other hand, is very, very short. So you got to live in that moment. You got to make it count. God bless me. Wish you success. Thanks a lot. So long, Stacey. We appreciate you. Talk to you later. We out here, y'all. Peace.